My name is Average Joe, and I'm a proud geek with expertise in movies, superheroes, and animation. My name is Beef Pork Ribs. I'm a fine repository of esoteric knowledge, which I suppose most people would qualify as geeky. Though I dabble in many fandoms, my main areas of expertise are anime, movies, and Belgian comics, with a strong recent insurgency of D&D. Our mission is to bring nerd and geek culture to the masses. By sticking it all under the microscope. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Bat Jar, Jar Podcast. Podcast. Movies, comics, graphic novels, TV, cartoons, animation, nerds, their geeks, entertainment, culture. Here it on the Bat Jar, nerdy pal, nerds and geeks, come gather around the scene. Come and join us in the Bat Jar. Come and tune in to Average Show and his team. Lots of here in the Bat Jar. When the newest nerdy news drops, these caught us pals, put it under the scope. DC, Marvel, Disney, Star Wars, Cinematic, Multiverse. Hello there, and welcome to the Bat Jar Podcast, where we put nerd and geek culture under the microscope. Beef Pork Ribs, you're back. Hope you enjoyed your, your Thanksgiving. Uh, of sorts. It was uh, uh, about 16 hours of driving, so I, I enjoyed it as much as I could. Driving through so hope- British Columbia, though, so it was very nice, a very uh, scenic driving, but uh, there was also... A little bit of snow when we got out of the mountains, thankfully not in the mountains, and we've had snow since. It's, in fact, snowing right now, so welcome to Alberta, boys. Oh, that makes me so excited for Christmas, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, We have some special guests with us today, so coming back to the podcast for the first time, uh, I can't remember when he was last year, but it was a couple months ago. Please, uh, you know, if you're listening at home, clap along and help us welcome back Ben the Movie Buff. Thank you. Thank you. Please no, hold your applause. <laughs> uh, hey, everyone. Uh, it's, it's great to be back. Yeah, it's been too long. I think um, the last time I was on this show was mid to late June. So it has been too many months. So it's uh, always a pleasure to be back. And I'm looking forward to all the fun stuff we'll be talking about today. So Ben, the movie about speaking of Christmas, you have been working on some Christmas movies, which I'm so jealous of you. So maybe if you could just give a teaser of like one of those movies is about. Uh, sure. Yeah. Surprisingly enough, um, I've only worked on one Christmas movie since returning to work back in July. But uh, the one I worked on in July, I won't give the title because like the title could very well change. But uh, it has to do with this uh, girl who used to um, drive around with her mother in this red car, which was kind of doubled as a sleigh. And they had a whole bunch of gifts in the back uh, that they would drive around and give these gifts to, um, to kids who lived in town and such. But of course this girl has now grown into a 30 year old woman and uh, she's basically trying to find a way to kind of get that tradition going again. So she needs to track down the car. She needs to make sure that the car is working and she needs to do a whole bunch of other things in order to, make this happen again so uh yeah I'm, i would not be surprised if that uh if this comes to one of the lifetime network hallmark channels by the end of this year if that woman was real i would marry her i would find out where she is and i would marry her because that sounds amazing but of course it's a work of fiction uh, we also have with us this week michael andrew who is back uh just from last week actually he helped me work through my feelings on titans and he's here to join us once again Thank you. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, it was fun working with you last last week with, uh, let's say, your strong feelings towards Titans. But I'm excited to talk about video game movies. So, Ben the Movie Buff, what is something nerdy or geeky you've been up to since you were last on the show? Jeez, I could probably come up with a, a number of things. But two quick things. The, the first is that... Um, According to IMDb, this isn't like the is probably the most accurate number I'll get, but I track all the movies I watch, right? So a couple of weeks ago, I hit 2,700 movies uh, seen in my lifetime. So that's not including like the 50 times I've seen Star Wars or the 40 times I've seen Lord of the Rings, but that's 2,700 unique movies that I've seen so far in my life. So I'm pretty proud of that. And the last few weeks, I've been watching a lot of horror films to kind of get ready for um, Halloween. So that's uh, some Dario Argento movies, some Vincent Price movies, uh, all sorts of fun stuff like that. So that's basically what I've been up to. And Michael, Andrew, you were just here last week, but is there anything? I mean, we we finished Cobra Kai season two today. You want to talk about how you feel about that? 
Wow. Uh, the last, the season finale for season two is probably my favorite episode, and I'm super excited for season three. And Beef Pork Ribs, what's something near to your geeky you've done since you were last on the show? I have uh, been catching up on Worlds. For those who don't follow my ranting, that's the World Championship for League of Legends. Uh, most unfortunately, Fnatic got kicked out, and yeah, that was really, really sad to watch because it was the first reverse sweep in the history of Worlds. Uh which, again, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, it's uh, in a best of five when a team is up by two games and then loses the next three to lose the series. It was very sad. They were looking solid until the third game and then uh, still did well. And I'm still happy they went to five games against the tournament favorites, but they just looked so poised to win. It's, yeah, very sad. Well, that's a very good way to transition because today we are indeed talking about video game movies and i have to clarify what we mean by this we're not talking about movies that have had a video game made about them like goldeneye or spider-man 2 and we're not talking about movies like pixels or wreck it ralph or the upcoming free guy that are inspired by video games no we're talking about movies that are direct adaptations of a video game and again it isn't something like the Arkham games where it's kind of based on certain Batman movies. We're literally talking about motion pictures, live action or animated, that have been direct adaptations or meant to be <laughs> direct adaptations of something that was originally a video game. And just to kind of narrow our focus, we're going to limit this conversation to movies. And I got to be honest with you guys, it, I don't know where this conversation is going to go. I think maybe a good way for us to get started here is just to help us understand where we're all coming from. Everyone share briefly what your favorite kind of video game to play is and how you're feeling about video game movies coming into this. Like, are you, Do you like video game movies? Do you hate them? Do you feel somewhere in the middle? Let's share our thoughts, and we'll go with Beef Fork Ribs first. All right. Um, oof, video games I enjoy playing. I mean, for years that would have been League of Legends, hands down, but I've got to be honest, I haven't played in quite a while. Um, I'm always a fan of the anything that Nintendo created uh, before the 2000s. Uh, I've recently started uh, playing through the Mega Man Battle Network series, uh, which does have an adaptation, but it's not a movie, so we won't talk about it. It's actually an anime, and it's great. Um... However, uh, how do I feel about video game movies? Well, in very recent years, there's been at least two that were decent, and that was a huge departure from the norm, and that's the stance I shall be taking for this episode. Yeah, so I agree with uh, Beef Pork Ribs that um, I'm a big Nintendo guy. Uh, I love a lot of the Mario Party games, uh, Mario Kart, um, Super Mario 3D World for the Wii U. I have, uh, I've had an absolute blast uh, playing these last few years. Um, the Donkey Kong games like Donkey Kong 64, Donkey Kong, um, Tropical Freeze. Uh, so basically, yeah, a lot of those uh, Nintendo games I have loads of fun playing, and that comes from me being a kid in the 90s, uh, having an N64. And then as for video game movies, um, to be honest, like, I haven't seen a gigantic amount of video game movies except for like the Resident Evil movies, Warcraft, the Super Mario Bros from the, the early 1990s and uh, Sonic the Hedgehog um, uh, earlier this year. But I, I think it's kind of, it's not terribly surprising that film companies would look to these popular video games and say, hey, if we turn this into a movie, we can make big bucks off it, and uh, people will, will like it regardless because it is based off of a video game. And obviously, we can talk more about that later. But uh, yeah, I, I've seen a few video games that I think are fine. I would argue that Sonic is probably my favorite um, video game movie just because I had a blast watching it in theaters earlier this year. But um, yeah, I, I think uh, sometimes they're fine and sometimes they're not. Ooh, video games. I actually play a lot of video games. I'm more of a open world RPG type of person, so I've put in a lot of hours into Skyrim. Um, but I dabble in almost anything else. And regarding video game movies, I actually quite enjoy them. Um, perhaps more than like somebody who's a fan of the source material, but um, I actually quite 
look I, I look forward to um, watching how directors and writers kind of take a uh, already established source material and do something with it so and for myself I've said this on the podcast before I am not a huge gamer I grew up with an N64 and a GameCube and the games I liked playing were kind of single player adventure games that were either Batman or Spider-Man based I know real original or things like Super Smash Brothers where it's just a bunch of button mashing and if you know how to use it well then you're better than I am uh, those kind of like video games I have no patience for anything that involves strategy or turn based whatever or uh, open world stuff it's kind of all beyond me and i think how i'm coming into this is i'm i think i'm pretty much convinced that's impossible to make a good video game movie and so that that uh kind of just brings us right into the conversation uh, of course video games have been a thing since the 1970s i can't remember what the first video game would be probably like pong or something but the first video game movie was indeed 1993's Super Mario Brothers, the movie. From Hollywood Pictures, Amer America's favorite game is now the movie event of the summer. It's super fun. Jump! It's super excitement. It's incredible! It's super action. Hello, morons. Hello. It's Super Mario Brothers. Plumbers. 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 You got a problem with that? Don't miss the adventure that jumps to the ultimate level of excitement. Super Mario Brothers. Rated PG parental guidance suggested. Now playing at a theater near you. Now, this movie was uh, infamous at the time of its release, and it continues to be infamous in how bizarre and how I don't want to say off kilter or how just different it is from the source material at that time in the early 1990s, like super Mario was everywhere. It was the Nintendo was taking over and the Sega was starting to come along to compete with it. So everyone in the world pretty much knew who super Mario was, except seemingly the people who decided to make this movie. Uh, I have watched it. I'm just curious. Uh, Maybe you could all just share how you feel about the Super Mario Brothers movie. It's almost as good as the cartoons, but it really isn't. But both are still funny. Yeah, I actually watched for the first time, I think, um, the Super Mario Bros. movie about two years ago. And, you know, it's kind of okay, I guess. Um, you can tell that they kind of, like, hit the... Um, how would you say that the, the checklist of like, oh, here's Mario, here's Luigi, here's Peach, here's Yoshi, uh, Yoshi here's Bowser. But then, yeah, I, I don't know if it, it, like, if I were playing the game as a kid and someone asked me to imagine how I would make a Ser Super Mario Bros. movie, I, I don't think I would picture what they came up with. And on the one hand, it's kind of interesting, but uh, yeah, kind of not really a memorable experience, uh, to be honest. And pick piggybacking off that, uh, it's been a long time since I've, I've watched it, and it definitely is not memorable. I don't. Rem I can only remember bits and pieces of it. Uh, but the way that I, I see it is, there's really not a lot of story, or if there's any story at all, um, in like the Super Mario universe. So, I think they kind of had a lot of freedom with the storyline, and you know, it's like it was. I think at the time when I first watched it, it was interesting to see how how they were going about um making a script but you know it definitely wasn't memorable i think one of the things also like i don't know um you said you know it's got mario it's got luigi but like at that even at the time of that movie luigi wasn't a clear differentiated character much i mean he still isn't that much it's gotten better but like it was really early in like like you said, there wasn't much of a story. Like there's been a lot more of a developed story or lore for Nintendo characters, but at the time there was really very little, especially for that franchise, to put into a movie. So it was kind of surprising that they that was their first attempt because I mean, I feel like there are other video games that were more story based that existed that might have been a better choice. Like, I mean, any given Zelda like Legend of Zelda game has more story than Super Mario, which is literally Bowser captured the princess, go save her. Yeah, I don't think I ever actually saw the movie until about 2014, and I had the opportunity to see the Nostalgia Critic live, in, and he did like this live kind of commentary of the Super Mario Brothers movie at a convention I was at, and so my first time watching it was with the Nostalgia Critic in the same room kind of providing commentary the whole time, 
And uh, I remember growing up, I had old comic books, and there were advertisements for the Super Mario Brothers movie in these comic books. So I knew that there had been a live action Mario movie, but I never sought it out. And so when I finally saw it, admittedly, it was under the pretense of someone kind of tearing it apart as was I was watching it. But yeah, it's it's an interesting take. I mean, the, the, even the title is a lie. It's called Super Mario Brothers, even though in the movie, uh, Luigi is Mario's son. So even, you know, they really took uh, liberties for what source material there was. And if you just look at the movie, you realize it looks nothing like the games. And they, I guess they were just trying to do their own thing. And by the time the Mario movie came out and was the critical failure it was, and it made some money, but not a lot, there were already several other video game movies in development. Uh, There was an adaptation of Double Dragon that came out, and then an adaptation of Street Fighter, and an adaptation of Mortal Kombat. I'm pretty sure that if there had been more time between the release of Mario and these movies already in production, that the video game movie adaptation trend would have just died off. But in the case of both Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, the movies were made for very cheap budgets, and they made way more money than they cost. I think I said saw somewhere like Street Fighter maybe cost like four million to make, and it made over a hundred million. So naturally that put the idea in the heads of the movie studios. You know what? It doesn't matter if these movies are any good. If we can pump them out real cheap, people will go and see them. And I have yet, I have not actually watched any of those video game movies in their entireties. I've seen clips. I understand they're kind of infamous for various reasons, but uh, what do you guys think about this? That the, 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 the trend kind of kicked off because some movies that were made for the cheap made money. I'm going to start by just, uh, very briefly defending the Street Fighter movie. It was by no means a masterpiece or anything, but um, honestly, it was a lot more entertaining, and not just because it was bad like the Super Mario movie. Um, Mortal Kombat obviously was super entertaining for it being bad, but I don't know if like one movie, like for one movie to completely kill a genre... It has to be pretty impressive, kind of like, you know, uh, what Cutthroat Island did to pirate movies. And even there, it eventually came back with Pirates of the Caribbean. But, like, it is very hard to kill a genre, especially one that is based on an industry that did at the time and still does make a lot of money. Like, the video game industry is, you know, pretty massive and has only gotten bigger. So I think that it might have slowed it down, but I don't think it would have stopped it entirely. I'd also like to defend Street Fighter. I still remembered the first time I watched it and I found it super entertaining it actually just makes sense now that it was a low budget because there wasn't any like special effects or anything like that as from my memory if my memory correct um yeah sorry um but I do think that it gave an opportunity for a lot of people to take a source material um and and create an uh, and create it and tell the story in a different medium and um, I don't think you could ever really kill something that's continuous, continuously makes more money every single year, both the movie industry and the video game industry. Like it just makes sense for them to continue to partner up and piggyback off each other's audience. So it definitely, I feel like it definitely just slowed it down. I have not seen Street Fighter yet, but uh, it's certainly <laughs> on the watch list. But I, I did see Mortal Kombat uh, when I was a teenager. And while I wasn't absolutely like in love with it, and I think part of that is because I, I really haven't played that many of the Mortal Kombat games, I think from what I can tell, probably one of the reasons why Mortal Kombat did better financially is that I think it, from what I can tell, looked more faithful uh, to the vi- the video game as a video game adaptation, right? Like you had the fight scenes, you had that, uh, that you know, uh, pump and soundtrack. And I, I feel like the, the look of Mortal Kombat looked a lot more like the, the video game. And I can imagine that uh, part of that led to its uh, success. Uh, the only thing I'd have to say about that is, yeah, but again, with the Super Mario Bros, like there wasn't much of a story, even though it's when you play the Mortal Kombat games, you don't necessarily get that much story until you get into like uh where the games had multiple endings and had an actual storyline, but there was always a, again, a lore more than a story behind the games, like why the Mortal Kombat tournaments were happening, what the stakes were. And that was uh, put pretty clearly in the movie. It was, you know, if earth realm loses this Mortal Kombat, then uh, they get invaded and there's nothing you can do about it. Whoops. Um, so like, 
I feel like it was definitely those movies had that kind of advantage over Super Mario Brothers. That uh, same thing with Street Fighter. There was a bit, again, not much of a story, but enough lore behind it that you could make a decent movie. And also, uh, Street Fighter, at, at least one of like I, they made at least two. And you know, Jackie Chan was Chung Li, and that was hilarious. And Jean Claude Van Damme was in one of them as well. Like they did get big names to play, you know, fighters in a fighter game, which I think was pretty cool. So it's been almost 30 years now since we had our first video game movie. And as B4 Gribbs mentioned, it's been only recently that there have been okay to good video game movies come out. And so this kind of brings up my question is like, why have we never gotten a good video game movie? Or why is it so hard to make a good video game movie? And so we've we've done our research, at least some research, and one common complaint I hear about video game movies, kind of in the vein of Super Mario Brothers, is that the video game adaptations generally adapt very little of the actual video game beyond maybe the title. And I got this quote here from Paul W.S. Anderson, who is perhaps infamous for being the director of all the Resident Evil movies. And he once said that a direct adaptation of a video game would be boring for the players. And so with his movies, he intentionally essentially set the movies around or in the world of the video game without ever actually trying to adapt the story of the video game. How do you guys feel about this? Do you agree with Paul or do you think he's out to lunch? I actually agree with that. It, it makes a lot of sense because I think as video games are kind of being more intricate and more detailed like it's actually becoming more like a movie even story-wise like there's a lot of video games that have very strong stories and writing that it's hard for a one-dimensional type of medium like a movie to to compete with that so if if it's a direct adaptation then a lot of people who've seen the source material the original video game would find it boring i think i would find it boring i think that it's there is some truth to it, but I think it also depends on the video game. Um, I do think, and we'll probably talk about this more, like there is the issue of like the players not really having agency or the, 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 the people not really having agency in what's happening in the video, uh, in the movie, which is kind of what makes video games interesting. But um, I think I like, as Michael Andrew said, the more, video games have been capable of creating intricate storyline mostly through you know technological advancements uh the better it's gotten and i think like like uh, yeah a lot of the video games that um or video game movies that were successful um there were a few have kind of followed that philosophy so i think it is a good one uh generally speaking but i think there are also some like video games that had enough of a story or have enough of a story that you can still with obviously with an adaptation, it can't be exactly beat for beat the same thing because once again, you're not uh, playing, you're uh, watching, which is, makes a lot of video games kind of harder to adapt, but you could still keep the same basic storyline for uh, certain games. Well, again, like Mortal Kombat or like um, Street Fighter, especially Mortal Kombat being as that was a game that pretty early on introduced multiple storyline, like timelines to it depending on who you were playing different people would win the tournament and there'd be kind of different endings and different effects to it uh which you know could be interesting but also add a little bit of suspense because you wouldn't go into the movie necessarily knowing uh who's going to win or what the end result is going to be i think paul ws anderson's uh comment is really interesting because while not the same it kind of reminds me of a similar thing we see when certain books get adapted into movies right and i think what happens is when a book reader reads a book and they love a book and they hear that they're that this book is going to be turned into a movie that they get excited right because oh I, we get to see this book uh brought to life and and displayed on the silver screen but then i think what happens is as they watch the movie anytime they change something from the book into the movie the book reader having um, more of a connection to the book than the movie will say like, well, why did they change that? They shouldn't have changed that. They, they just should have left it be. But I think what Anderson yes, is saying is that it, it is potentially kind of boring to do the same thing beat for beat so that when you go into, I guess in this case, a video game adaptation that like, oh, they just do the same things that you did in the video game. But I think we also have to remember that um, video games 
some from what I've heard can have really good stories, but I think a lot of the time it has more to do with the experience. It has more to do with the gameplay of like, is it a really fun game uh, to play? And that's definitely kind of a difficult thing that regardless what you're adapting, uh, it's difficult to find a way to take what people love about either the comic book, the novel, the video game, or the TV show, and then find out how do we uh, remain true and faithful uh, to all those ideas and concepts and characters, but kind of make it work for a movie, uh, even if it involves uh, changing certain things. See, I disagree with Paul, because I think of a lot of anime, it is quite literally a direct page-to-screen adaptation of the manga. And people who read manga will often go and watch the anime version of it. And often some book adaptations are represented on screen in a literal way. I think the nuance here, though, is that when you're adapting something from like a book or a comic book or a manga and you're putting it on the screen, it's kind of like a vertical relationship in the sense that you're making the experience arguably better, you know, to see something in motion and to see it speaking instead of just your own thoughts that is in most cases for most people a better experience than just simply reading it whereas with video games especially more modern video games you already have it moving and talking and like you don't that that already exists so to adapt and just to another format that's more of a horizontal transition you know you're not merely making it any better per se in terms of the viewer experience whereas Again, book people might disagree with me here, but generally uh, you're getting a totally different experience when you're watching a movie instead of reading a book. It might not be a better experience for you if you're a really imaginative individual, but when you're playing a video game, it's all there already. And as you guys have kind of touched upon, it's already more immersive. You are the protagonist in the video game generally. You're, you're the one in control of the story. And when you're watching a movie, it's a passive experience. You're just in the audience and you're meant to identify with certain characters in the story, but you're not in control of it. And I think that's partly why video game movies haven't really worked yet because they haven't found a way to make the protagonist you. Like they have not found a way to make a movie as interactive and immersive as a video game can be. I, I see your point, but I think that there is at, like at some point you have to say, is that even possible? Like, can you actually make a movie as immersive as a video game? And I don't think it is actually possible. And so the result is that a it is much easier to take um, heavy, like story heavy video games and adapt their world into a story that people would actually want to interact with rather than trying to go beat for beat on a certain... Um, on a certain story um, of a game. And I think the other problem, which kind of throws a bit of a wrench into your analysis, not that I'm saying it's bad, but um, is that what makes a good or at the very least a popular video game and what makes a good story or movie are two things that are very different in most cases. Um, If you even just take like, take what's really popular right now among us it is a super popular video game right now and it has a super simple story there's an imposter and you try to find him well yes you can make a movie about that and you could either make the main character one of the people looking for the imposter or the imposter there are different angles but it's never going to be on the same level as a bunch of people scrambling together trying to figure out who the imposter is and accusing each other uh, it won't have the same drama, even with really good actors. The problem is a lot of video games that are popular are popular because of different mechanics uh, that are immersive or different uh, points of view. The fact that you can change the storyline, which is impossible, well, near impossible to do in a movie. And all these things that make a good or a, and a popular video game are not things that necessarily make a good or popular um, movie or even story. I uh, while I agree with you that like in some cases there are video games with great stories that could make for a compelling adaptation, you know, beat for beat the way an anime or a man- uh, manga can be adapted. Um, in most cases, what makes a video game exciting is not something that makes a good story. I do think that I do think that there's a lot more similar similarities 
to what people find entertaining uh, in both a movie and a video game than than what you've said before, Graves. But um, I also get where you're coming from. Um, I do think that if the original video game is known and popular because of its storyline, it's hard to convert that into a movie. The, the the video game that I'm thinking most recently is perhaps Uncharted or even um, The Last of Us, which is like a story-driven game. And you could easily see that as a movie. Even as you play it, it seems like created to be like a movie. Um, and if you were to convert that, it's you're taking, you're stripping down elements from what everybody's been saying about having control and ownership and being the protagonist in the story. And you're just leaving the audience to watch the story. So you're kind of uh, watering down uh, the experience. But I also see where people, where movies succeed is if there's less of a story in the first place. It could also fail, kind of like a, a Super Mario. But uh, from my understanding, one of the higher uh, high, highest rated movies is Angry Birds, if I'm not mistaken, which has zero storyline. The writers and the directors like created a story that was compelling for people. Yeah, I think what's interesting here, talking about like, oh, is it possible to make a good, if not great, video game adaptation, is that um, I remember, uh, I think it was somewhere on the Lord of the Rings uh, extended editions, watching through all the wonderful bonus material, that uh, there were all sorts of um, uh, comments where like people, um, when asked about this idea of like, oh, making the Lord of the Rings into a live action trilogy, a lot of times they would say that it was an unfilmable a uh, series of books, right? That it couldn't be done. And I think whether you're adapting a book, a comic book, a TV show, or a video game, there are always going to be various difficulties about figuring out how to best translate what people liked from the original source material into a movie. And from what I can tell, it seems like there are a lot of video game movies that aren't made to be good or great. They're just made to make money, right? And I'd love to think that maybe one day uh, in the next <laughs> 10 to 20 years, we get a filmmaker who really loved playing a certain series of video games and also is a good director and gets picked to uh, make a movie uh, off of this um, video game series that they've um, fallen in love with, right? Because, I mean, this has happened on a number of occasions with directors who um, make comic book movies, right? Is that, like, they, they typically are huge fans of the comic series that's being adapted into a movie so that when it comes time to make it that they're actually fairly knowledgeable of like what needs to be done in order to make it uh, a good movie to make it, it a good story and uh, maybe we haven't gotten there maybe we'll never get there but you can't help but wonder if one day someone might actually crack the code of how to make a good video game adaptation so i do think that in some ways we have had that uh, exactly what ben the movie buff was talking about in kind of uh sonic the hedgehog it did seem like that was a movie which a lot more love than a lot of video game movies have been given before it was in many respects even though there's already been sonic the hedgehog might be a bad case to talk about because there have been lots of tv shows and comic books that have been written about the sonic the hedgehog universe that are more story focused than the actual games and yet the movie decided to avoid all of that and just tell a very simple like almost cliche story about a guy from a small town wants to move to the big city yeah, and I think, like I said earlier, if I did have to pick um, what I thought was, like, one of the better video game adaptations, and keep in mind, like, I haven't played that many Sonic uh, video games, but if we're talking about movies that are based on video games that I actually found enjoyable, my vote would easily be uh, Sonic. I would have to add to that, personally, uh, Detective Pikachu as well. Uh, that movie was a lot better than it uh, had any right to be and i believe we covered it uh i believe we covered it on the podcast actually saying that it was both um one of the best video game adaptation movies and also one of the best pokemon movies uh thus far uh which i think is uh kind of talks to its uh its its strength and again it was a movie that seemed to have a lot more people who kind of grew up with Pokemon and loved it as children that uh, were kind of working on it and making it uh, the, what it became, which is, you know, a good enough movie and one of the better 
Pokemon movies and one of the best uh, video game adaptation movies. Uh, not, again, that there are that many excellent ones, but I feel like that was definitely up there. There was one YouTuber I watched yesterday who was kind of making the point that Ben the movie buff is making is that perhaps there just hasn't been the right filmmaker to come along in the same way that there was like a Sam Raimi and a Brian Singer and a Christopher Nolan who came along and were able to uh, successfully adapt comic books is perhaps we actually just haven't gotten that person for video games yet because a lot of the filmmakers who have been associated with video game movies are typically just not very talented directors or people like Paul W.S. Anderson who clearly don't really understand what they're adapting. And this is a good time to bring up uh, an infamous filmmaker named Uwe Boll. He's a German director who has perhaps, not perhaps, famously directed some of the worst movies ever made in terms of Rotten Tomatoes, in terms of box office. And a lot of his movies happen to be adapted from video games. And it's interesting because it turns out in Germany, for a long time, there was a tax credit that the government gave out to production companies who produced movies in Germany. And so what this guy would do is he'd buy the rights for video games on the cheap, make a movie based on that video game, and then he was able to claim all his expenses related to making those movies as tax deductible. And the way that tax law worked is that you only had to return profits back to the government. So as far as he was concerned, the less movie, the less money his movie made, the more money he got to keep for himself. And so I don't know if this guy's like really so much to blame for why video game movie adaptations are so bad, but he certainly has contributed to this narrative that it's impossible to that's make that we're, you know that it's possible to make a good in terms of quality good adaptation of a video game. And I thankfully have been spared the experience of watching his movies. I've only heard about them. Uh, do you guys know the movies he's made? I know a little bit of the movies that he's made and. and- quickly searching up his name, you could see some titles that kind of pop up, like House of the Dead, um, Far Cry. Postal is something that has popped up when you search up uh, video game movies. Um, but I feel like these type of, of movies and, and storylines kind of have to do with how the creators of the video game kind of just sell their, their content for cheap. And I feel like people are just taking advantage of it. And I think you could see that with other types of med- media, um, whether that's books or anything like that. Like if, if people really cared about their, their content and their stories, they would hold on to it and really wait for the right person. Um, so I feel like these things are more forgettable. And I don't know if it really taints the genre for me. I think that it would be a much better point to make if there weren't also a lot of big budget um movies made by the comp like by the video game company at least partially that also flopped like yeah at some point um Uwe Boll's movies are terrible and they're cheap quickly made adaptation but at the same time I think he he gained a reputation for that fairly quickly, which kind of discouraged people of even regarding his movies as like uh, anything to be regarded. Um, and so, but then you have things like uh, the the uh, the Warcraft movie that failed miserably. You have things like the Super Mario Brothers movie, but there's other. Um, examples that are more recent i mean the slender man movie on netflix is kind of halfway between both of those things as being kind of cheaply done quickly and kind of having you know people behind it who might know what they're doing um but at some point you have to say that it isn't uve bowl isn't like an isolated case right he is perhaps a contributor but i don't think it he's enough in his own right to have really created this mythos of all oh, video game movies are bad because there's a lot before and since that I've kind of added on to that. You mentioned the Warcraft movie. I have yet to see it myself and I probably never will. But what I hear people say about that movie is that they try to condense way too much of the game story into a single film. And granted, a lot it's a problem with a lot of video games is that the story spans out 6, 10, 20, 30, 100 hours. And so to try and actually condense it into something that's meaningful, that can be digested in a movie, that's often not very easy to do. If I had to make a general point 
I get, or general point might not be the, the right thing, but if I had to make like a, a kind of blanket statement about video game adaptation, I would say that a lot of them are better adapted into something like a TV show or a mini series. I mean, you can, for, for example, there is, again, uh, the Mega Man Battle Network uh, manga is great. It covers all six of the Mega Man Battle Network games, and there was an anime based on it, but it was long like real long and it covered and even there it covered a lot of the story pretty quickly so you kind of had to play the game to get everything but you still got enough uh, from it that you didn't like it wasn't necessary but that's the thing is that and it's a similar thing with book adaptations which is which kind of brings us back to like ben the movie buffs point that maybe there just wasn't somebody who put enough effort into knowing what to adapt and how much to adapt um because the same thing happened earlier on when people started making, uh, you know, anime uh, live action movies in the West is that they were like, well, we know this show, like, uh, you know, the fiasco that is Dragon Ball Evolution. It was vastly because they didn't know how to balance how much to put in the movie for exposition for people who hadn't seen it, uh, what to put in for the fans. And there's kind of this, it just became this kind of mess and a lot of, I think, video game movies have the same thing where, like, they'll either put too much that only fans of the game will understand or not enough, and it makes it very hard to have an accessible movie. And, you know, again, book adaptation had the same problem for a long time. But we're going to see if, like, the new Dune movie fixes what the other Dune adaptations have done. But even, like, Lord of the Rings, there was so much effort put into the script by people who knew what they were doing uh, whereas a lot of video games, like even the Warcraft one, like Warcraft has a tremendously heavy lore. And I think there would have been a way to put some of those events in a movie, maybe uh, or a movie or two or a trilogy or whatever. But yeah, if you try to put too much all at once, you end up just losing on things. And last comment on that, it kind of suffers from the problem of like the DC universe that tried to put to copy the MCU and just put in a bunch of like ensemble superhero movies without having put in the legwork to create characters that people related to. And I think that's the same thing with a lot of video games. Like they're trusting that people will just know the characters who have played the movie and it makes uh, for something that only a niche audience can enjoy. I think the issue that a lot of people are running into is like, what is considered a good video game movie? Because in the case of the Warcraft movie, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it actually is the highest grossing video game movie of all time. If if the aim is to make money and have people watch it, it kind of succeeded in that and it was successful in its own right. But it's the question of, is it sticking to the original script or like the vision? Like what is the win? And I think with video games, like you have an additional team of creators of visual artists that do you go back to them and ask them is this what they envision is this how they they want it to look because um there's a new movie coming out by uh our good friend paul um of the resident evil uh movies where he's he's creating the movie uh the movie adaptation of monster hunter and according to that like he went back to the creators the visual artists uh the animators and really got all of their input and he said this is the most true and uh, true adaptation but we also don't know if that's actually if that's if that's a good thing i'm sure the right answer here will be more complicated than what i have but off the top of my head and trying to answer like oh you know how would you define a good video game adaptation i would argue that for one, it has to be a movie that uh, the audience who has played the video game that the movie is based on, uh, that they are satisfied. And then I'd also like to think that um, it would also be a movie that is satisfying and entertaining to people who are maybe not familiar with the video games. So I would even kind of uh, go back to my experience of seeing Sonic where like I'm familiar with the game, but I haven't played like I'm not a huge Sonic fan. I haven't played a lot of the games on the Sega systems. But I think I know just enough about the game without being like a hardcore fan to have enjoyed what I saw in the movie earlier this year. 
And I think even in book adaptations like Lord of the Rings, for example, from what I can tell, a lot of book fans really liked the movies. And a lot of people who hadn't read the books before seeing the movies, like myself, for example, um, also fell in love with them. And uh, I I think it's trying to strike that balance of uh, satisfying the people who kind of have these expectations about what the video game movie should be like. And then also having people that don't know much about the video game and showing them something that they find uh, cool and exciting. I think I agree with B Pork Ribs. It, it just makes more sense to take a video game, especially one that has an expansive, you know, complex story, and turn it into a TV series. Because if I take Paul Anderson's quote to heart, is that you, we should never try and do a direct adaptation of a video game. And up until now, that's led to things like the Super Mario Brothers movie, like Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, which, as far as I understand, has nothing to do with the actual game it's based on other than the title. And some people like that movie. Uh, I found, I I watched it for the first time a few years ago and I was like, yeah, this is fine. Like it's, I didn't think it was tremendous or awful, but it's felt so middle of the road. And I guess the thing I'm trying, having a hard time figuring out is like, at what point do you even bother if you're just going to, if you're going to like basically just use the name for brand recognition, why not just come up with the original idea and just put that out there? Like what's the point of make calling it a video game adaptation if it in almost no way resembles the video game you're trying to adapt. I think the one answer I would have to that is, um, and it's not a good one because there, this is also a type of movie that has not done well, but it's kind of like how uh, making a Dungeons and Dragon movie was something that they tried to do for a long time. Dungeons and Dragon, hugely popular. They tried an animated movie. They tried a TV show. They tried things based on around it. Uh, and a lot of them failed, but those that did a little bit better were a lot less about Dungeons. They were either about Dungeons and Dragons culturally, what it was, and, but that's not really an adaptation, or it was just set in the world that was already known. And I think that we're also seeing this kind of in follow-up to big movie series. I mean, it's not necessarily working super well, but you do have more and more people who are making movies based on known universes i'm thinking about like fantastical beasts for harry potter um i uh you know all the offshoots of the star wars universe in which it's like a universe that people know and you're making stories in it and i don't think that's necessarily a bad idea either like yes you could make something fully original but if you do have something that enough people know and enough people are fans of that they will at least understand the concept, and then you make a good story within uh, that, then I think it can work. And I think that, like, we'll see with uh, the Monster Hunter movie, but Monster Hunter is not a superbly uh, story-driven game. As most RPGs, it has a story, but it's more about what you do. And so I think that's a prime example of something that could be set up as... We're going to have a good story, and we're going to place it in the Monster Hunter universe, and people will react to it. And there's a precedent for that even with, like, the Joker movie. It wasn't, it was not really a Batman movie. It wasn't even really a Joker movie. It was a good movie loosely set in the DC universe and with a Joker. You know, I was thinking about the Joker movie because in my mind, that's how you do a good video game movie is that that film is such an immersive experience. You really you see everything from Arthur Fleck's point of view and you experience everything the way he sees it. And I feel like that's that's how you do a video game movie is that you make it like a character study or you make it so you're only seeing the the point of view of the main character. That's that's just like if we're talking about like how to make a video game movie stand out from other types of movies or to make it feel more like a video game, that seems like the only thing to do. I do think it adds a video game feel, and I think uh, the first movie that comes to mind is Hardcore Henry, where it's a first person point of view type of movie, and and it kind of goes. It's like it, it has a lot of action. I don't quite remember the movie now. I don't know if you guys have watched it, but it did give you the perspective of what the protagonist was going through and um i agree it does give you uh, a different perspective that is very uh akin to a video game i don't think i've seen hardcore henry but certainly it makes me think of chronicle i don't know if anyone has seen that movie because that's literally uh told from the main character's point of view you hardly see him at all 
uh, and you see him like discover these superpowers that he has. You mean like the the Lego based toys? <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? No, no not Bionicle. <laughs> Chronicle. <laughs> Uh, just to add a bit of clarification, Hardcore Henry was a film that was filmed entirely in first-person view, uh, which made it a lot more akin to a uh, first-person shooter. I don't know if that was fully clear from what then the movie buff said, but that was, yeah, it was an action movie that was shot entirely in first-person, um, which, yeah, made it feel and look a lot more like uh, a video game would, which I think, I, I thought was rather interesting. It made for a lot of really cool effects um, that um, you wouldn't get in a traditional movie. But once again, here we're talking about adapting the feel of a video game rather than making an adaptation of an existing video game. And I think those are very different things uh, because I think you could um, like you could make a movie fully top view and have it animated and it probably be a cool movie, like a cool animated movie, like, in top view like any of the legend of zelda or pokemon games are but that would be an entirely different thing from adapting legend of zelda uh into a movie which i think would be pretty hard again and this is something i we kind of touched on but not really is that like the whole uh the protagonist being like an insert even more in a movie uh than in movies or in books like a lot of video game protagonists are really boring like Link has absolutely no personality. In fact, the games are designed that, like, from a very long time, I think they kind of changed in some of the more recent ones, but, like, you would never actually see or hear, well, you see because you read it, the dialogue that Link, the main character, would say. It's literally you had to, like, assume what he had been saying based on the reaction that other characters were giving you. It didn't give you any options to answer differently, or when it did, it was like one of those, will you help me? Yes, no. And if you say no, it's like, are you sure you're not going to help me? And just kind of repeated. Um, and it makes him a very bland character and would not be very interesting to see a story about him, but maybe a story around him in his universe could be something cooler because a lot of the more memorable Legend of Zelda characters are side characters, people that uh, Link meets on his adventure. I think you're hitting the point there, Beef Pork Ribs, that perhaps the way to make a good video game movie is to not try and directly adapt an existing video game. Maybe it is the movies like Wreck-It Ralph or Pixels or Ready Player One I mean, Ready Player One's based on a book, but maybe it's movies like that or this Free Guy movie that's coming out that kind of captures the feel of a video game without trying to adapt a specific video game. Like Ratchet and Clank is a video game that has a very cartoony style and they decide to make an animated movie out of it, which was probably the right choice because to try and do that in live action should be really weird, but the movie still did terribly. So, you know, there doesn't seem like, and maybe we just haven't seen it yet. Maybe Monster Hunter will be the one Maybe the Uncharted movie that Tom Holland is making right now will be the, the movie that changes the discourse. But I, I think I'm still sitting firm on this point that it is impossible to actually do a direct adaptation of a video game well as a movie. Yeah, and I would, I would comment on that by saying th- that I think one of the difficulties that filmmakers probably face when trying to make a video game movie is that sometimes uh, with certain movies, depending on... Um, I don't know, like, let's use like Transformers, for example, imagine someone, and I mean, to be fair, some could argue that this was done with Bumblebee, but with the first five Michael Bay Transformers movies, it's almost like there's kind of this expectation about how these movies are supposed to work, right? That there's like, you know, uh, lots of uh, big special effects, lots of Transformers, lots of inappropriate jokes and uh, objectifying women uh, through the camera, which uh, happens a lot in, in those movies. But imagine if like someone came along Uh, to do a Transformers movie, and they're like, oh, I want to do, like, an intense character study. I want to do something with a good story. It's quite possible that the producers might say, like, well, no, that's not what Transformers is about. We we have a certain way we want you to do it, and we want you to do it this way. And I think the the case could be made that something like Bumblebee definitely brought Transformers uh, back on track because it actually kind of seemed to have a better quality than a a lot of the more recent uh, other Transformer movies. But I think uh, that will be one of the challenges is that anytime a filmmaker wants to genuinely make a good video game movie, the powers that be might have different ideas about how they want certain things uh, to work. But 
you know, I, I think anything is possible. Maybe one day uh, we'll get it, but we will have to wait and see in the meantime. Maybe uh, as a way to just kind of wrap it up and save our game, let's all go through a video game that we would like to see adapted into a movie. Uh, for example, I, I actually would like to see some kind of Legend of Zelda video game movie. I think you'd have to go the route of Paul Anderson thinking and perhaps not make a direct adaptation of a specific Zelda game. But I would like to see that that kind of narrative kind of in a film. So I'm not 100% sure if this would make a good video game adaptation or not, but it's just the first thing that comes to mind that hasn't been made into any big film. Um, I would say something like Portal. Uh, Portal was a really fun game that I played years ago, and uh, I can't help but wonder if there might be a fun way to kind of make something like that into a fun movie where you have all these different equipment and tools to um, make portals from one place to the next. I know that we've seen things like portals in Incredibles 2 and in X-Men uh, Days of Future Past, but I think, you know, there's potential to make a cool portal movie. I would actually go with something like Skyrim, like the Elder Scrolls um, like universe, uh, where there's a lot of freedom, there's a lot of content, there's a lot of background like information that people could use and kind of have the freedom to go whatever direction with the plethora of of tales and um, stories that um, that could play a part and enrich enrich any type of story any creator could possibly have. I'm gonna go with an odd one, maybe, but I would like to see a Team Fortress Two movie. I think because there are lovable characters and there's also a wealth of like kind of funny animations that were done both by the studio and by independent people based around those characters. I think it could be, it would be a very interesting um, concept and it could make for a very good story if you really wanted to. And I think that that's kind of, that's what I would rather see in a video game adaptation. Uh, not the whole story about why they're fighting and the inheritance and why the documents are important. That can be in the background of the story, but to make it a story really centered around um, the characters and perhaps you know the fact that they are essentially fighting clones of each other and of themselves over and over again. I just want to make one more quick uh, comment. Uh, Average Joe was mentioning earlier about um, movies that capture the feel of a video game but are not based off of video games like uh, Free Guy and Ready Player One. I would also say that Edge of Tomorrow is also a movie that captures the feel of a video game because our main character, Tom Cruise, um, you know, he's, he's stuck in this time loop, right? So when he gets into certain situations, if he dies, he just goes back to the beginning and has to figure out how to keep on getting further and further. And on top of just being a really good movie, I think it is a fun movie that definitely kind of captures the feel of a video game because our main character has to keep on going until he uh, hopefully beats the game. So despite my pessimism, it seems that there is hope for video game adaptations. We've had a couple decent ones in recent years with Detective Pikachu and Sonic the Hedgehog. And things are looking up because we do have this Monster Hunter movie that's coming out. The Uncharted movie is coming out. Uh, Illumination Entertainment, who gave us the Despicable Me movies, is indeed working on an animated Super Mario Brothers movie with Nintendo. And if that does well, then that'll obviously open up the door for Nintendo to consider making more movies again because they kind of put a huge ban on adapting their material into other media after the Super Mario Brothers movie. So if this new Super Mario Brothers film from Illumination does well, I assume the floodgates will be open on Nintendo's side to allow them to do more content. Perhaps Detective Pikachu kind of, you know, won them over a little bit. And if this Mario movie does well, it'll do it again. As far as the live action ones go, we'll see how Monster Hunter does and we'll see how movies like Free Guy do. Sunday should be warm and sunny with just a scattering of drive-bys. Potential dirty bomb Sunday night. Front of warm, dry gunfire mixed with late afternoon stabbings. Could lean into streets wet with the blood of innocence by early Tuesday night. Great day for the beach, but not Hitman's Beach, which will be mined and sprayed with high-caliber fire from a renegade gunship stolen by a coked-up bandit and his frenzied band of bloodlusting mercenaries. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think? Those of you who have been listening to this conversation, do you agree with me that video game movies just don't work, or do you agree with the others who are, uh, we'll say, more positive about it? Let us know, because once again, we have no mail. And we'll remind you 
faithful listeners how you can send us an email, do all that fun stuff. If you want to reach the show, you can send us an email at batjarpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can tweet us at the Bat Cookie Jar. You can find the Bat Jar Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube, because we got a channel. Share our posts on Facebook, write reviews, give our shows a rating. This will help all people join us inside the Bat Jar, and we appreciate it dearly. And this is normally when we would go inside the Bat Jar to choose a topic for next week, but we're actually going to give the Bat Jar a break this week because next week we are going to be celebrating the Bat Jar podcast's fourth anniversary. Indeed, it was in late October of 2016 that we posted our very first episode on the internet. And so we're going to celebrate our four-year anniversary by introducing a new segment to the show called What Were We Thinking? And in this, hopefully, will become a recurring segment, What Were We Thinking?, we're basically going to do a review of one of our old Batch Jar episodes. And this will be especially fun for Beef Pork Ribs and any guests who weren't necessarily part of those episodes. Because the first installment of What Were We Thinking that we're going to do is for our episode titled Nerd vs. Geek. Which was the 26th episode of the Batch Jar podcast. So it'll be probably hard for me to go back and listen to that episode uh, to hear uh, perhaps just how I sound even younger or the audio quality perhaps is not as good or perhaps just to see how immature and how silly my opinions were three and a half years ago. And so this will be a fun opportunity for everybody. Please, uh, in this next week, you have homework. Go back and listen to episode 26 of the Batchar podcast. Uh, title is, of course, called The Nerd vs. Geek. And we're going to find out, what were we thinking? Were we right? Were we wrong? In fact, Ben the Movie Buff, maybe if you remember this better than I do, I think that might have been the first episode you were ever on. Yes, that's correct. The way you were kind of leading up to that episode, I was, um, to describing it, I was like, oh, I think I know which one he's talking about. And yes, that was my first appearance on the Batch Art Podcast. So yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be some interesting fun uh, listening to that one again. So we want to thank our guests for being with us today. Uh, Michael Andrew, thank you for coming back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was This was a fun one. And Ben, the movie buff, of course. Uh, thank you for being part of the show once again this week. No worries. Thank you. This is always a blast. Anyway, come back to the Bachelor Podcast. Next week, we talk about what were we thinking, nerd versus geek. And until that time, I'm Average Joe. I'm Beef Pork Ribs. I'm Michael Andrew. I'm Ben, the movie buff. Catch on the flip side. Always eat your vegetables. Please make more video game movies. See you in the next one.